um, I've glammed up for you a little bit, half glam, um, to hold space in this day after solstice, the longest night. It feels like a long night <laughs> these last two years. Um, lately, I've been centering on the idea of the long winter and what that could mean for all of our sanity. Realizing that in my life, I've shied away from the cold and the dark of winter. I guess it's a DNA kind of survival thing, but I've flinched. A lot of energy has been put in moving away from that feeling. And there is such a peace in acceptance of the winter and embrace of the winter. And winter can not only be a season, it can be an emotional time, it can be a social moment, it can be a grief. And so I feel very connected to the idea of of honoring what all of most of our ancestors experienced, which is the noting of the changing of the sun. It's where science and old magic come together in a world where science and magic come together. So I want to hold space for you all in this long-standing celebration of the sun and this first day of the return of the sun. We've gone through the longest night. Blessed be the dark. I also, I decided to wear black today, not because I'm in mourning for my own life, that's a Chekhov quote, but because I want to honor the night. I make my work in the nighttime. I love the nightlife. I've got to boogie. I'm a disco, aha. Um, and living in New York City for so many years, which is, you know, it's not Paris, but it is another city of lights. I, um, I really thrived in the night. And so this idea of, of uh, any shame being around the longest night or the cold, the dark, like embracing the cold and dark. How can we embrace the cold and dark as our own shadow inside of us and not spend any time running away from it, but rather accepting it into our hearts. Okay, that's my preamble. And now let's move on to the ritual space. So I have saged the space my space with herbs. Um, I encourage you if you have any herbs um, or you know a wand or even um, incense, lemon spray to do such and get it into the corners. Um, I think I'm going to do it with one more herb though. This is a mixture of uh, rosemary mullen, sweet grass. And there's a little marijuana in it too. So just cleansing the areas around where the stuck energy could be, the corners. I'm in a new space right now. I'm excited to be here with you today because this is a stressful time. No matter even if we have a great attachment to Christmas or not, I just went into a store to um, increase my candle supply here. And there was so much anxiety and tension in the space and this kind of um, jittery, you know, um, 
racing against the clock feeling and energetic principles uh, invade everyone, whether or not you want it or not. And I, and I was noticing how the energy in this sweet, beautiful gift shop was entering my space and changing my own chemistry. And so I'm really excited to set this space for us today and, uh, and, and for everyone who listens to this in, in the future of um, really holding our own calm energy. And I've been working with this principle of peeling away, peeling away when I'm reacting, when I'm picking up others' anxiety or I'm reacting to say something my son or partner or mother say, when I want to react in a way that isn't really serving my greater good, I, I've kind of, I've, I've been able to internally have this feeling of falling away from that reaction or that energy, where it's like, instead of fusing myself to the dynamic, I, I kind of retreat back. It's been really fun and helpful. And so I think that um, this is also going to help us in that moment um, because the final step will be a confirmation of us sharing our light with the world. So first we've, we've, we've cleansed the space. We've got, we've got our ritualized space somehow set up with it with um i've got the yule fire behind me i've got some garlands if you haven't had time to figure out this stuff then just use mine <laughs> um and this is a moment about light so we'll start by lighting one of our candles uh, that has any sort of dark tones on it. I chose blue for the blue night. And um, and if you can create your fire source and light your candle by saying, I welcome the longest night. And so we've got this one candle and this is lit for the dark night, for the embrace of the shadow, for the embrace of the hibernation with Omnicron where in a new spot of present day stress disorder where it seems as, the, as if this, uh, this hibernation is never going to end. Um, and there's a a seasoned acceptance now that we have we we don't have the shock of the new it's just here we are again the constant the acceptance of the dark and um and then you have some paper and speaking of the dark let's go into what it is we want to potentially release with the fire of the dark, with the Yule log. Grab your writing utensil. And I'm just using tissue paper because I find that that is going to create less smoke in the space, but really any little piece of paper. I'd like for you guys to close your eyes for a second, take a deep breath in and release, feeling your tailbone rooted into the ground or whatever surface you're sitting on, or if you're standing, it's your feet. And really work with the idea of feeling rooted, roots growing off of your body, circling into the, the earth. And then let the polarized image emerge of a tether to the heavens, to the ether, 
coming off of the soft spot when you were born, this center bit of your skull, either a halo cord or a, a very light white yarn. It's directly pulling you up to the heavens. And then for a moment, just breathe, sit with your breath. With your eyes closed and your breath, feel that moment of, of peeling away from any anxiety or I should be doing something else or I could be. All you have is this moment right now. Or I could be doing better or am I doing it better? Let it all release. So there's just that tether to the earth and to the heavens, and you are the conduit between. And then as you settle, bring to mind what it is you want to release, purge, burn, cast away. What are what are these elements that are not serving you that perhaps have been passed down for generations and that you are going to take up the brave mantle of saying goodbye? And once you've got those clear in your mind, I want you to just open your eyes and and jot one to three of them down. All right. Once you've written them down, getting a little piece of paper. And as you hover them over your your candle here. I want you to really envision these burning up. And I find it powerful to say, say a mantra uh, with it, which, or speak some words to it. Um, for me, I say, goodbye in the word. So I'll tell you, mine is flash, flash to anger and comparison. But you could also say out, out, be gone. So I'll, I'll say mine and then you can choose how to say yours. Goodbye, flash to anger, out, out, be gone, comparison. You can even like say goodbye with love. And I'll just hold a little moment. Oh, there's some in the air.
I'd love if anyone feels called to unmute themselves and speak aloud, um, one of theirs, um, so we could witness. I'll just hold a minute for that to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then come back in a minute and we'll move on. I miss Rizzo and everyone else. Today I am letting go of doubt, judgment, and disconnection and creating compassion for myself, radiating to my community, to others and family, and personal power. Thank you, Armand. Bless you be. Anyone else feel called to speak aloud their, what they want to release? Hello, Rizzo and everybody. Um, I've been making a lot of changes this year for myself, just inner work. And so I want to release who I've identified as to make space for who I truly am inside. Beautiful. <sighs> mm. It's so nice to hear others because we're all so connected that each of these releases can be like miniature releases within us. Oh, I'd love to hear from the others, but I'll just hold, I'll hold a little bit longer to see if you want to speak aloud. Okay, so oh, now we have so much space because we've burned up those things that we're releasing. And, um, and now I, oh, I forgot water. I just need to get a little bowl of water. If you could do that would be great. All right. Okay, we're back. So we've made this space, we've cleared out some of the, the things that we want to just, it's so beautiful to watch things burn. And this, uh, and solstice is, has long been attached to the power of the Yule, the power of fire. Um, as the days grow colder, our Celtic ancestors would use a big fire, a Yule, Yule log fire, in their pagan 
celebrations of um, the sun and the return of the sun. And now I would love to herald with another candle, if you have a light colored candle, um, the return of the all powerful sun. We could not live without the sun and the warmth. And, um, and so as you get, gra gather your fire implements, um, I wanted to sing just a little song that would bring us to the place of the sun within all of us. So that solar plexus chakra, you can imagine right now your glowing sun in the center, just below your um, sternum the center of the body um, geographically. So imagining closing your eyes for a moment again and imagining this bright yellow glowing sun at the seat of the self, the solar plexus chakra, warm and lemon yellow, that color of safety, warmth, sun. The release of the sun, feeling sun on your skin, how it feels. We welcome back the all powerful sun. And as we welcome back the all powerful sun, we welcome back the sun within ourself, the light, the light that is connected to a place beyond ego, the light that is the part of us that is free to connect to the divine nature of things and not wrestled in egoic response. So like what I was releasing, comparison, um, yeah, doubt of the self. We're, we're connecting to the sun place, which is the healthy ego, the ego that is directly charged by the things that are in the ether protecting us. So I would love for this moment as uh, we light this second candle and I'll sing that you could put in a prayer to, for peace with yourself or peace with the world, um, a prayer for unity and get in mind of who you're praying to. Um, I think that prayer is powerful and a lot of it I've shied away from because of the kind of Judeo-Christian <laughs> um, hold on the idea of prayer, but prayer is for us all. It's for us all to connect to what we are wanting to create in the world and actively being a part of. I think it's important to figure out who you're praying to and that there's a myriad of things. You can pray to the deep nature of Gaia, the center of the earth, you can, or the, the planets, the gravitational pull around it. You don't have to not agree, agree with science to find some solace of spirituality. Um, and that's what it is. It's, it's a solace to accept that we are not in charge of it all. We are not at fault for it all. So as you open your eyes and light our sun candle and make a prayer to choose ancestors, living guides, teachers, uh, uh, energetic guides, angels, um, goddesses, God, um, divine light. 
so I make a prayer. With this candle to the undying sun, I pray to the goddess the sage, the knowing. And I pray for internal peace and the choice of peace and how that can trickle all around the world. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the world, I'm going to let it shine. All around the world, I'm going to let it shine. All around the world, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I like to welcome back the sun as we've already headed into longer days. And now, once again, picking up your writing utensils and something that you don't need to burn, but rather sit on your altar or in some place that you can spy as our dear friends Cameron and Armand um, spoke aloud the things that they, oh, yay, Darcy's going to sing some extra verses. Incredible. Let's write these down and then we do that. Um, so writing down quickly what we want to, um, what we want to bring in, what we want to, um infuse our lives and the world with and then have these that the stick around we can look at them and amplify them so i'll give you a few moments to sit with that you've already strengthened your solar chakra and so i encourage you these to be things that aren't are not completely tied to egoic wishes. <laughs> I'm not saying they have to be altruistic, but that these things are maybe what's underneath the first wish. And maybe one is personal and one is global. Just suggestions.
And I'm going to speak aloud mine. Um, and if anyone else feels called, I'll just hold some space afterwards for anyone else to unmute themselves and speak aloud what they want to amplify. I want to amplify ease, personal ease. So kind of in line with what I was saying before, peeling away from the fight, whether that be taking up the mantle for personal fights or even long distance, <laughs> falling back into grace, feeling support that I'm not the only one muscling through. I don't have to stand. I don't always have to argue <laughs> for what's right. Um, and then for a global sense of unity, like pulling in less of this divisive, I feel like that fight happen, is happening on a definitely a national level and a global level where people are so entrenched in their own views and fiery about that, that, um, that we're missing a, a certain amount of caring for others. Okay. Anyone else like to speak aloud? And if not, we'll sit here and meditate on our... Today and this year, I'm bringing in and creating love compassion, connection, and curiosity. Deborah, do you want to speak aloud? What you want to bring in? Can I? Yeah. Okay. I want to love my family unconditionally. And I also want very much to love and care for the unvaccinated people. Mm. Because I've spent a lot of time being angry with them. Mm. And I want to be able to love and care for them mm, and hope that they are well. Recipe. Thank you for that one for us all. It's a huge fracture. Any of the others who want to speak aloud what they want to bring in for this year? I want to infuse my life with ease and non-judgment in order to bring in confidence and clarity and perseverance for myself, for my family, and for my community. Yes, of that connecting ease and confidence, you know? that connection that one leads to, that they're paired. Okay, well, Darcy wanted to bless us with some additional verses of that song that I, that spiritual that I sang. 
And so as we gaze at our candles and <clears throat> sit with how we want to um, embrace this abundant wish prayer, Darcy, if you'd be so kind as to score it, that'd be great. Oh, oh, only sign. Okay, how do I do that? Do I show you? Oh, I can, you can show me your video. Oh, you, oh, you want, you want me to sing the extra verses. I got it. Is that right? She only sings for her kids. I got it. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me do the extra verses. <laughs> uh, I, I thought you were going to give us ASL. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, as we bring in the sun. Gotcha. I'm going to give you a couple extra verses as we amplify these wishes, these prayers. Okay. This little light of mine I'm going to help it glow. This little light of mine, I'm going to help it glow. This little light of mine, I'm going to help it glow. Help it glow, help it glow, help it glow. Yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to burn it strong. This little light of mine, I'm going to burn it strong. This little light of mine, I'm going to burn it strong. Burn it strong, burn it strong, burn it strong. Hallelujah. All right, we've come to the last bit of our ritual today. So this is where we've, we've cast this, we've, we've burned up what we want to release, We've drawn in our prayers and our wishes and our hopes for this new year. And now we get to revel again. So let's, um, let's revel <laughs> in a way energetically where we once again feel our root into the earth, um, into whatever you're seated in, that deep connection to the center of the earth, this orb this planet that circles around the sun and the sun. And then we have our own orbit, which creates this uh, beautiful passing of seasons and the delight of the passing of the seasons based on our relationship with this fiery orb of the sun. So closing our eyes once again, taking a deep breath together feeling the magic of breathing together that we're spread across different time zones in different temporal experiences. Some of the friends that may be listening to this uh, are experiencing the summer solstice. Um, and so we've got that root into the earth, imagining a heavy, gold plated pubic bone that and tailbone that weight you down while from that root we've got our heavenly balloons <laughs> our hook from the center of our head that connects us to to the ether above and then we are the magical conduit between the pole of heaven and earth and releasing ourselves from the pressure of being a mortal being that is toiling in a small life towards some version of success that's been placed upon them from societal pressures. <laughs> and now we here in this meditative space with our eyes halfway closed or all the way closed, Taking a deep breath, I want you to bring to mind what are the things that you have accomplished since the last winter solstice. How 
how you have already moved moved into wishes or prayers, things that were just wishes and prayers before, how what you have done for yourself in the last 365 some odd days. Um, and I know all of you have moved in some way towards manifestation because you wouldn't be here if you were not some part of a manifester. <laughs> um, to really get the top couple that you have a sense of glowing pride about. And then getting the image of those things and, and unconsciously marking how those were things that you had wished before. Those, those, those were just simply prayers, hopes, wishes before, and now you have, in the last year, you have manifested them. They have become part of your life, even if it's just a little bit, even if you're just on the road to Even if you're just on the, the journey, you've taken the first step. So just a few moments of silence as you bask in the glow of what you have made in the last year. And now with that little bit of water that you have, it could be just from, it could be from a fancy little bowl or it can just be from a cup around you. Um, and if you have glitter um, in your bowl, extra credit, but water is, our attraction to water is the same as our attraction to glitter. Uh, the, the reason we like glitter is because the way that sunlight bounces off of fresh water, creates the same thing in our optic nerve. So it's, it's built in to um, want the shiny because that's how we would source our, our fresh water which we need for survival. And if you have someone around you, you can do this with them. But if it's just you, I want you to actually anoint yourself with this water. And if you have glitter in it, all the better. But why are some... you putting it in your hair, anointing yourself with the, the joy of, of water, baptizing yourself, if you will, in glitter, taking, taking water. Water. About the, um, the <laughs> power that we've potentially vested to others. So, this will be the last stage of our, our ritual today. Water. Water. Correct. Yeah, and anointing yourself in a way that feels yeah, sacred to you and honoring of this life-giving force of water. I'm right now in a very watery place right on the ocean in, um, in what is seeming to do, pick up as a bit of a gale. And um, so it's almost like bathing, bathing with the water in a way where you're so celebratory of these things that you are able to accomplish at the same time as the feeling of being reborn again. And this has always been a, a holy day for rebirth. So 
of course, it's the rebirth of the sun, but then the Egyptians celebrated the rebirth of Horus, the sun god at this moment. And then we all know how, you know, the Judeo, <laughs> the, mainly the, the Christian um, PR makers were very smart to co-opt a pagan holiday and make it about the rebirth of Jesus, um, who was also reborn. Um, and the idea of rebirth, the generative rebirth, is everywhere within nature. As we are reborn from hibernation, reborn from the turning inward that we're experiencing in the pandemic land right now. We baptize ourselves to emerge, emerge in a way. And this can also be the beginning of the merging of our hibernation time. If you're, if you're feeling, I feel like we're going into a bit of more of a winter now um, with the virus numbers um, rising, shows stopping, canceling. Um, we're all hibernating and how can we embrace that hibernation like a squirrel? Let's <laughs> all be more like squirrels. Um, okay, so we've baptized ourselves in our glitter and our water. We've burned up what we want to release from the paper, from our dark candle. We've welcomed in the unity of, uh, of the sun and we've put our prayers for what we want and what we want for the world and for us. The last step is for us to make a pact to spread this kind of centered light into the world, be the conduit for a more equanimous land where people are listening, people are helping, people are responding, people are calm, people have that energetic sense of ease that I was speaking of. And even when someone picks you up into a land that is that kind of vibrational tension, making the choice to fall back, to recede, to recede into the great loving arms of Gaia, the goddess who's trusting the flow of the earth. And so, if you have a last candle, a third one, I'm just going to light this third candle with the promise that I am going to be a light of change in the world, be an inspiration. Okay, and so let's close our little circle. Once again, close your eyes, let your eyes power down. And on this first day as our days become longer. I close our circle thanking the north, the south, the east, the west, north, south, the west, east, all the directions, finding the directions where you're sitting as well. I honor the light and the dark within all of us. I embrace the longest night I release all of our energetic guides that we've called in for this moment, our ancestors that are looking over us. I call in the four elements to complete our circle. Water, we've got it. Earth, we've got it. Air, and fire. And lastly, the element of ether, the smoke in the air, the feeling of magic, the feeling of light, the feeling that you are being watched over, you are being guided.
Blessed be, thank you so much for joining me in this moment of centering as we head back toward the glory of the sun. Blessed be you all. Goodbye.